Hello, and thank you for tuning into the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and we are Mother's Day weekend now. Uh, Mother's Day of 2024. Uh, hello, all you mothers out there. Uh, without you, we couldn't be here. So thank you, mothers. Um, to my mom, uh, get to see her today. She's coming over. We're going to have a little lunch together, kind of a late lunch, but that's fine. Um because it is Sunday, they go to church and they do a lot of extracurricular stuff after church, and then they're going to come by and, and have a little meal with us. But uh, if you guys are on YouTube right now, you can see the backdrop behind me. I have a new uh, Millennium Falcon picture above my lightsabers, and to my left of me, you can't see it, but I have uh, four Lego sets that I got to put together that my wife got me uh, for 50th birthday. I celebrated my 50th the other day, and uh, it's kind of cool. Um, now, I remember being young, as most of us have a vague memory of ourselves being young. And uh, <clears throat> I remember when my grandmother, my nana, turned 50. I remember, I remember that being a big deal. And it's interesting when you're a kid because everyone seems so much older than you are, right? And I'm 50 now, and I have a grandson that is newborn um and holding him i'm reminded of that interesting time in my life and how this is a great big circle of life and death and living and it's the living that we love it's the living that is so wonderful and we want to make experiences for our children and our grandchildren so that they have a life worth living and all of the tools that they can have and so on and so forth. And I've been extremely lucky in my life to have grandparents who are very active, um, to have opportunities awarded to me that were uh, challenging for other people. Um, some people close to me would say that it was through my own efforts and hard work, but um I can't help but believe that I'm just extremely blessed. I've had a blessed life. And so, you know, once in a while, Mother's Day falls on my birthday. And that's kind of a cool celebration because without my mom, I wouldn't have a birthday. So kind of a hand in hand thing. Um, but if I'm going to be selfish, because this is, I mean, this is my podcast. I can talk about whatever I want to, right? It is kind of weird to be like, all right. And we want to celebrate moms. Hey, happy Mother's Day. And also, it's my birthday. Like, can we do something cool for my birthday? Like, <laughs> last year, we went to Disney as a family. Um, me and my wife uh, had a vacation with my mom and my stepdad. And we took them to Disney and we got to ride a bunch of rides. And actually, on my birthday, we actually ate dinner at a place called Yak and Yeti, which is inside the Animal Kingdom. And then afterwards, uh, we had. We were going back to the room and my wife goes, Hey, let's just let's just go into the back side gate of Epcot. Uh let's use our um what's the gondolas? The sky sky tram, sky I'm blanking on the name right now. The <laughs> the gondola system. Um let's ride that over there and by the back gate and let's see if we can get in and ride the ratatouille ride, which we did. We got in and we got to ride the ratatouille ride. It was so cool that we hit them up the next day and we're like, hey. We're going to make sure we ride this because this is really cool. We get to ride it a second time. And, but yeah, so there's times where you kind of want your birthday to be a big deal. I didn't know that I necessarily wanted my 50th to be a big deal. And I was okay with what we did. Um, we just met some friends after work, had some dinner. Um, during the day, I got phone calls and stuff that I couldn't answer because I was in the middle of teaching a defensive driving class to some uh, new hires and um but it was nice to get the messages and listen to them over and over uh especially my brother alex left me this funny song that he made up which was cute um but yeah so it was a good birthday i liked it um you know i, I there's always the weird television idea of what a birthday party should be or a celebration should be and then there's the reality, uh, which never matches whatever the thing is on TV. And sometimes there's the pressure of um, expectations versus reality. Um, 
even with things like gifts. I've always been a nervous gift giver because I have overthought things or I've thought too much about expectations versus reality. Um, I know that in my own case that there's often times where I look forward to something happening and then when it does happen, it doesn't happen like I pictured it. Um, if I had to write a book about my life, it would be, that's not what I planned. <laughs> and I think if you talk to the average person, they would tell you that their story is going to be similar. It's not how I planned. Nothing really turns out like we planned. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it just is. Um, not better or worse. It just is. And I've always tried to mitigate my expectations because of that. And I've always thought that it's better if I didn't know any of the details and I was just surprised. Um, I know when I went to go into the Marine Corps, there was a conversation that I had with the recruiter. He said, uh, hey, before you go, we're meeting uh, every Saturday and we're going to be going over some knowledge that you're going to need to know. And we're running together as a group so that you can get your uh, endurance up, your cardio up. And I was like, you know, I said, I hear what you're saying, but if I'm honest, I do better if you just throw me into it. Um, I react and I learn quickly and I just, I grow better from being thrown into it. And he was like, what? <laughs> he goes, Who's, who says that? I was like, I do. Um, but that's the reality is like, I can, I can be nervous about a thing and have expectations and a big worry, um, because I'm thinking about all of the possible solutions. Uh, my youngest gets that from me, uh, Jacob growing up would overthink situations a lot. And I know that's where it comes from. Um, you know, I've heard Whitney Cummings say that could be a survival technique that's been brought over from years ago of the hunter gatherers and the, the people who were, um, you know, farming and whatnot, uh, sort of learning how to exist while there were dangers like wolves and bears and other tribes that would come after your people. Um, that nervous energy, that thoughtful, uh, mentality of there's always a danger around the corner. Now <clears throat> it's weird because in my day-to-day -day life, uh, I don't necessarily just fear things. Um, and part of that's just from living and going through stuff. You just, you learn to mitigate uh, actual danger from just your own mind running off in different directions. And part of that is physical limitations versus your abilities. Um, part of that is just your willingness to accept what is happening. Um, oftentimes when we're met with adversity, people's gut reaction is to freak out. And sometimes, um, sometimes we've worked over problems in our head and our subconscious enough that when the thing happens, we aren't surprised and we can react and we can do the things that are necessary to stop it from happening. I remember getting into, um, a vehicle with my dad or hearing my dad do a YouTube video where he's hopping in a vehicle for the first time. And he says, well, they say there's no brakes. That's okay. I can deal with that. You know? And I remember thinking, wait, brakes are kind of important. What do you mean you can deal with that? What do you mean? No brakes and it'll be fine. I can figure it out. He's like, yeah, I've, I've done it. I mean, and that's the thing is once you've done whatever it is, multiple times and it becomes no big deal right um for women who are celebrating mother's day for the first time like uh brie has for us in our family um you know the idea that you're going to grow a human inside of you and that it's going to escape at some point like it almost sounds like a science fiction alien movie right this thing's going to come out of your stomach and it's going to eat you alive ah, which is kind of true I mean, let's face it, kids do pop out of you and they do consume your life. Um, <laughs> I say, I jokingly say, if you're doing it right. Uh, but I mean, that's kind of the reality is, you know, the idea and concept that you're going to grow a human inside of you and then it's going to be a person, a real person with ideas and challenges and consequences and, um, their own mind, their own taxes, their own, whatever you want to say that a life becomes here in this country or around the world. Um, 
that that life came from you. And, you know, you watch movies and stuff and you kind of understand that mothers are impacted because I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm, I, listen, I can only tell you my experiences and stuff that I've seen on TV, but, you know, from my point of view, um, I can't imagine growing a human inside of me and then it escaping. <laughs> That's the only way I can say it. Jettison out into the world, this person and that becomes a person. Um, I mean, in the beginning, it's just a little mush ball baby. It's so cute. You just want to smell it and cuddle it and love on it. But then it becomes his own person with his own ideas and its own podcast and its own whatever you want to say. Um, wants and needs and fears and desires and all that stuff all rolled together and came out of you. And so, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy that we exist. It's crazy that this is a life. It's crazy that uh, I'm doing a podcast out of a spare bedroom that used to be one of my kids' rooms. And uh, I have toys behind me and I'm 50 years old and I'm excited because I got Legos. It's all crazy. But it's okay. Because I realize as I go through this life, as I'm 50 years old now, um, and I've said this before, we're all just doing our best, right? We're all just trying to figure this out, how to, how to coexist, how to live within our own skin, how to enjoy this life. And uh, yeah, this is all part of it. So this past week, um, I know this is stuff I heard podcasting. I'm supposed to tell you about some stuff I heard. Um, I've tried to watch some things and I've not really gotten into them. There's a special that's on uh, Amazon right now. Um, it's the Roast of Tom Brady. And it's a long one. It's like three hours long. Uh, I watched it uh, over several days. Matter of fact, I didn't yet, I didn't even write it up on my Google search of Tom Brady. Lots of good comedians did this. Uh, Kevin Hart was the host. I'm a huge fan of Nikki um, uh, Nikki Glazer. Um, the rest of it, I was just there to watch. Oh, Bert and Tom were on it. Uh, they had a small part. It was very small. But, yeah, it was decent. It's a roast. Uh, if you don't know what a roast is, it's basically somebody, a celebrity of some sort, says, hey, roast, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer to roast me or let you roast me. And it's usually a fundraiser for some kind of charity. Um, in this case, Netflix, I guess, came to Tom Brady and offered him the, the rumor is it's $50 million. Um, that's a lot of money to just have people make fun of you for three hours, right? Uh, but, you know, Tom's a philanthropist. And he's trying to move on after being the, the guy, um, the sports god that he was, winning all these Super Bowl championships. I think it's seven rings he has. Something like that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of jokes aimed towards his ex-wife, Giselle Bündchen. Uh, the whole spy gate, deflate gate, Alex Guerrero, OJ Simpson, uh, Bill Belichick, and his new job status being unemployed. Uh, the Patriots owner, Robert Kraft. Uh, <laughs> he apparently lost a lot of money in cryptocurrency. Um, Peyton Manning was on there. There was a lot of jokes about uh, him losing twice to Eli Manning. Um, yeah, Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> There's a lot of, there was a lot on here. Uh, to me, the big winners were, uh, as far as comedians, uh, Nikki Glaser, Tony Hinchcliffe, and um, Andrew Schultz. Uh, really, really, really funny stuff. Those, I think those are the top three comedians on there. Um, the celebrities that were on there were not great. Uh, Ron Burgundy, <laughs> Will Ferrell came out as Ron Burgundy. And that was kind of, uh, I don't know. It's, it's surreal. If you really love Ron Burgundy, then you would have gotten the whole character thing. But if you vaguely knew about Ron Burgundy, there was a lot of, uh, moments where he was really, it seemed like he was lost for words. Uh, there's a reason that some people are comedic actors and some people are comedians. Um, you could definitely tell that whenever the athletes got up there. 
uh, Rob Gronkowski, Randy Moss, Matt Light, Julian Edelman, uh, Drew Bledsoe, uh, even Tom Brady when he got to do his part. It's uh, There's a reason they play professional sports and don't do things on stage live action. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. I laughed. It was a lot of it that was funny. But then I watched this. Um, I tried to watch this show called Dead Boy Detectives. Um, it got a really high score on Rotten Tomatoes, 93%. And I thought, okay, well, I'll watch it. And I can tell you there's like, I don't know how many episodes, but I think I'm only like six or seven in. And, and it's almost like it's almost like I'm pulling my own teeth to watch it. There's nothing wrong with the series. It's just, I don't know, there's something missing. There's something not there um, for a show. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, we, <clears throat> I did go over to uh, my stepbrother Michael's house because his wife, Amber, owns a photo studio called Carolina Moments. Uh, if you guys don't know Amber, Amber helped me get my camera lens situated whenever I was setting up this podcast. Um, I, I tend to, I was going to have her on here during COVID and we got super busy and neither one of us ever got back with each other on doing that, but I'm going to eventually at some point have her sit down and talk about her becoming a professional photographer, uh, owning her own portrait studio and so on and so forth. But anyway, <clears throat> we went over there because uh, one of our kids was doing photos with their newborn and we stopped by to uh, visit and be part of the uh, fun. And Michael brought me in the other room and he was like, hey, check out this movie. And I started watching The Beekeeper on whatever service it was that he had. And uh, Jason Statham's the main character. Um, the sort of bad guy is Josh Hutchinson, Hutcherson, which is cool. Um, I remember him being a child actor doing Zathora and then uh, growing up and doing Hunger Games. Um, but yeah, now he's a full grown adult and he's playing bad guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the movie was cool. Um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of action. It's a lot of, you know, this guy is better than everybody else. He's going to beat everybody. And I mean, to say it's predictable is uh, predictable, uh, but it's good. It's decent. Now, the one thing that the one movie I always think about whenever it's my birthday, because this is kind of a pivotal thing in the movie. This movie came out in 2003. It's called Identity. Okay. It stars John Cusack. Now, this was John Cusack, like, post Say Anything and post a long line of not doing any movies. This is before he did Con Air. This is before he did a lot of the things that he did later on. But uh, I want to say they must have made this movie for a steal um there are a lot of actors in this that became bigger later like jake Busey, um alfred molina uh yeah rebecca de monet amanda pete this is one of amanda pete's first movie p-e-e-t um not to be confused with peak i wish we were related god that'd be cool anyway uh ray liotta the rundown of this movie, and I watched this years ago, back when I was all by my lonesome, little single parent guy. It says, when a vicious storm breaks out in Nevada desert, 10 people, 10, seek refuge in an isolated motel. At the same time, serial killer Pruitt Taylor Vince, under the care of psychiatrist Dr. Malik, played by Alfred Molina, who has just found the killer's revealing journal, awaits execution for murder of a group of motel guests. When the stranded traveler realizes they are being killed off one by one, limo driver uh, Ed Dakota, which is played by John Cusack, bids to stay alive and reveal the murderer's identity. Dun, dun, dun. And there's a big reveal in it. They start trying to piece, piece together how they're connected to one another. And... They talk about their lives. They start talking about why, why is the killer after me? I have, no, there's nothing. I, and they're given all the facts about themselves. And all of a sudden, one by one, they realize they have the same birth date and it's May 10th. Oh, same as mine. Now I freaked out because I was a single parent at the time and I was watching this by myself. I turned the TV off and I ran outside of the house and I was like, what am I watching? 
and a thought happened to me. I was like, what if this is not just a movie? What if everybody who watches this, it tells them who, what their birthday is and they go, oh my God. Like, But that's not really what happened. It's just a coincidence. So anyway, because of the coincidence, I love this movie so much more. So if you're, your birthday happens to be May 10th, check out this movie. You're going to love it. It came out in 2003. I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> just because it'll freak you out. <laughs> I've already given you the May 10th thing, but anyway, it'll it's still, it's good. It's a good movie. It's still a good movie. All right. That's it. I'm going to wrap this up. It's a short one today. Um, it is Mother's Day. Uh, call your mother. Go visit your mother. Um, if your mom's gone from this world, uh, think about her. Um, without moms, we wouldn't be here, right? So uh, thanks, Mom. Love you. And I'll see you later. And as always, cue the cow. Where's my button? Oh, there it is. Cue the cow. Cue the cow.